and it will be uploaded to michaels.com slash classes, um, usually by tomorrow. And also, uh, you'll be able to ask any questions that you might have for Megan or the team in the chat box. So make sure to type anything in there and I'll try to relay them and get those answered for you. So go ahead and take it away, Megan. Okay, thank you so much. Hello everyone, I'm so glad to be back with you today and welcome to any, any new friends that have decided to join our class. Um, my, my name is Megan and um, just a tiny little brief background about me. Um, geez, lots and lots and lots of years ago, um, I opened a bakery here locally in Utah. This is where we're broadcasting from today. And um, I, before that, I just grew up probably like a lot of you, just loving being in the kitchen, loving getting creative, playing um, with my siblings and my, my parents, you know, coming up with recipes and just in the, just in the kitchen. It was a playground for me. And um, fast forward all those years, I opened up a bakery and we now have several bakeries here uh, locally in Utah. And several years ago, I uh, partnered with American Crafts. That's where I am today, I'm at their studio. Um, and we developed a line of food crafting items which are available in Michael's, which is why Michael's is graciously hosting our class today. And hopefully some of you have been able to walk the aisles of Michael's and see some of these products. Um, today we're gonna be using a lot of the meltables and you can see these, this fun, yummy package. Um, but we also have sprinkles, we have candy toppings, we have a lot of different food crafting items that are available for you to use in your endeavors at home. Um, I still consider myself an, an at-home baker. You know, I, I do have retail locations. We are technically a franchise, but still in my heart, I don't really feel like I'm a professional. <laughs> I just think, hey, I just like to bake treats and I still do it at home with my kids. So we are, we are the same. <laughs> we, are, we are kindred, kindred spirits. So again, thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited. All right, so we have the holidays coming up here in just, well, a couple weeks, not even. Um, and so we, I'm gonna show you just some fun ideas that you could use at your Thanksgiving gatherings. I recognize that this year Thanksgiving might look a little different for some of us, depending upon where we are um, in the country with this crazy pandemic, but nonetheless, this is definitely still stuff that you can do with your family, you can um, do and deliver to your friends and just kind of share some sweetness with the people that you surround yourself with. So first things first, we are gonna talk about caramel apples. Um, I don't know if any of you feel like intimidated or scared by caramel apples, but I'm here to tell you that you shouldn't be because they are actually very, very simple. And I believe that like the universal truth is that you really can do anything if you have the right tools and the right resources. So that is very true, especially when it comes to baking and food crafting and decorating. So I'm gonna go over just a few things that, um, that are important to have when you're doing caramel apples that will make your life so much easier. So first of all, obviously, <laughs> You need some delicious apples. I'll talk a little bit more about them um, here in a sec. And then you're gonna need caramel. So again, I'll go into all of these kind of step-by-step, step. whether you go to the grocery store and buy some or whether you make some on your own, um, you need the caramel for the caramel apples. Here are some like wooden dowels, car caramel apple sticks. They're pointed. Um, on the edges, they look like pencils, right? So you'll see here why that is helpful when I jam them into the, to the apple. Um, and then should you choose, I mean, you can definitely just do straight up caramel apples and then that's kind of all you need. Um, but today we're gonna show you using some of our meltables, um, just how decadent and delicious you can make 
these treats with really not a ton of effort. So in that case, you would need some chocolate or some, um, these are melted, well, they're meltables is what we call them. They're candy wafers. So they're technically not like um, actual chocolate. This one does have cocoa in it, but we have a lot of different colors and different flavors. And what it is, it's a confectionery coating that doesn't require like a tempering process. So you can just straight up melt it in the microwave or with a, or I'll show you these other ones too, um, with a double boiler. Um, you don't have to be like, you know, fancy chocolatier to use these, which is wonderful because I am not a fancy chocolatier. So that works out well for me. So, um, so yeah, so you would need some candy wafers, some of these meltables, which again, available at Michael's and then just anything that you want to add to your apples. So here we have, um, here's just a display of some of the sprinkles that we currently have available in Michael's stores. Just a fun variety of all things festively fall that will add to them. And then I also have just different toppings like um, some pretzels and some toffee and some sandwich cookies and some um, chocolate candies that will come in to handy. So let's talk apples. So really any apple that's edible will, will work. Um, I actually prefer using Granny Smith apples because they're really, really tart, which I think pairs really well with like kind of the warmth of the caramel. They're so good. But Honeycrisp, Gala, um, Pink Lady, I mean, really any of them, any of them will work just fine. So one of the things that's really important when you are doing the caramel apples is you need to wash the apples. And that's because when you, well, when you buy them from a grocery store, if you have your own apple orchard, <laughs> still need to wash them, but you don't necessarily need to wash them in warm water to remove the wax like you would if you buy them from the grocery store. So when you buy them from the grocery store, you'll see they come polished and they have like this really beautiful sheen to them. Um, and that's, that's like a protective wax coating essentially. So what you need to do is you need to dip them in pretty warm water and, um, and wash them. And then I'm trying to think, do I have a towel here? <laughs> I have an apron. I'll show you. I'm not a, I'm not a, there we, oh, okay. We got some paper towels. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm not above using my apron for a towel. I actually do it all the time. So I have, um, I, I actually don't know, April, have these been washed? <laughs> Probably not, huh? Okay, so over here, I have some warm water that is actually holding my meltables, keeping them warm, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so all you do is, and this is hot because it's keeping the meltables heated and my caramel heated right now. So you can just kind of roll them in the water. And again, the point of removing the wax is so that when you dip them in the caramel and or the chocolate, that it just adheres better to, to the apple. Um, so let me just do a couple more. And you want to give them a nice, nice little drying off session. Here, we'll do one more. I don't know if I'll get to making all of these apples. I hope I do, but we'll just do these four for now. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to return my super hot water <laughs> over off screen. Okay. So next, what we're gonna do, remember these little pencils that I showed you earlier? We're gonna put these into the apples. We're gonna take our stems out. Do you remember being little going A, B, C, D, E? My husband's name's Ethan. So 
there was this little thing when I was a kid. I don't know if it's still around, but it's like if you twisted the stem off and then <laughs> the name or the letter that you landed on was like the name of, you know, the person you had a crush on or whatever. <laughs> so conveniently, I landed on E, which is wonderful because, again, it's my husband's first name. So, okay, so you take out the stems and... What you want to do is you want to take the tip of the stick and just kind of center it into the center of like where the stem was. Now, sometimes your apples aren't going to be like the hole's not necessarily going to be like perfectly in the center. Um, but as much as you can, try to put the stick into the center. And what I do is I kind of just twist it like this. And you don't want to, you don't want the stick to go all the way through because then you kind of run the risk of splitting the apple. Um, but it's a pretty simple process. Kind of just got to jam it in a little and then give it a twist. And what you want to do is you want, so, okay, so here's a good example. So see how the apple's not going to be like perfect, perfectly flat, which is fine. It's totally fine. But I just, as best as I can, try to center it in the, in the top of the apple. Um, and really what you're doing is just making sure that you are putting the stick in far enough that the apple will hold, right? Because apples can be heavy. And these apples, I would say, are like a pretty, I would say they're like a small to medium apple, but you can do like the huge ones, which are crazy fun and, and, and impressive. But again, you just wanna make sure that you put the stick in about an inch to two, maybe um, inch and a half into the apple so that it's strong and will hold the weight of the apple and the caramel and the multiples and the candy and all the things. So um, I also have brought, and I'll use this a little bit later, but if it was like super hard for you, you can, I have a little wood mallet and you can just kind of knock it in. But these apples were really easy to get the stick into. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do actually is, this step isn't like totally necessary, but since I'm gonna be talking a little bit at length about the caramel process, I'm gonna put these in the fridge. And again, not necessary, but I personally just think after having washed them, and then when you have the hot caramel, when you apply the hot caramel to a colder apple, it just kind of helps it set a little bit better. So April, do you mind taking these? And then will you bring them back on a plate, please? That'd be awesome, thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> it's so great to be in the studio. <laughs> I did these several times by myself, and so I was like running off camera and, you know, disappearing for a little bit to take stuff to the fridge and whatnot. So I'm grateful that April is here to help. Okay, so we're gonna talk caramel. And here's the thing. So caramel, you can totally go to um, a grocery store. Michael's probably carries some of, you know, little caramel candies or caramel bits. And that's actually what I have here today. And um, it really does just make the process that much more simple. So all, if you store by your caramel, <laughs> I just broke my spoon in the caramel, which means I need, it needs to be heated up a little bit more. Um, if you buy your caramel at the grocery store, then really all the instructions will have you do is just like, add some water to it and either over the stove top or in your microwave, add it and, um, and stir it and then off you go. So, and the caramel I believe is delicious, but I would just encourage you to not be scared of trying to make your own caramel recipe. They, they are very simple to do. If we had a stove top here, I would have, I would have done that. Um, just because I would want to show you how, just how simple it is. But essentially, if you do choose to do caramel at home, 
some of the things that you'll want to make sure that you have are like is like a really nice sturdy saucepan um, because when you melt the butter and the sugar and depending upon what recipe you're using corn syrup or sweetened condensed milk or whatever um, you'll if you don't have a good quality pan you can like run the risk of burning the caramel um, that has happened to me several times <laughs> before I felt like I was grown up enough to invest into a nice saucepan. Um, and, and then you're going to need a candy thermometer because again, if you just go online, you can find um, a recipe, uh, but most, uh, I would say all recipes, you're going to want to have your candy thermometer so you can make sure that you um, bring the caramel to the right temperature. And that temperature is about 235 to 240 degrees. And that's technically like the soft ball stage of caramel. I don't know if you've heard that term before. Um, so you'll need a thermometer to make sure that you are within that range. And then the other thing is what I have found is really helpful is to have a wooden spoon when you make it because the wooden spoon has a really high tolerance to heat and it also doesn't conduct heat. So that means when you're stirring it, it's not going to like suck out any of um, any of the heat that you've taken the candy up to. Um, so it's just it's just a tool that I think is really, really helpful to have. So, again, if you're going to make your stuff at home, I would definitely recommend having those three things, a nice quality pan, candy thermometer and a wooden wooden spoon when you're doing it. OK, with that said, I'm not at home. And I don't have a range. So we did the store-bought candy route, which these were the little cubes of, um, of caramel, which we unwrapped, which is a fun, fun chore to have any kids do for you uh, before you get started. I'm actually going to heat this up just a little bit more. It's been sitting off to the side for, for a minute. And um, if I can remember, Jordan, what was it? Time cook? Okay. I get a little, I just, you know, when you're not used to your things, I'm not used to that <laughs> microwave just yet, even after we've had all these classes. So I'm just gonna heat that up a little bit and then I'm gonna ask April to bring back in the chilled apples. And then I'm gonna show you how simple it is to coat them. And you're gonna wanna make sure uh, that when you, if you are doing store-bought caramels um, and you're not making them, you know, like in a little saucepan, then you're going to want to make sure that you have a bowl that's deep enough that your, and, and big enough that your apple will actually fit inside of it, but also um, deep enough that you can use the depth of the bowl to help you coat the apple. And hopefully that'll make sense here. And I show you, thank you so much. Okay. So again, if you're making caramel at home, then the apples will have set up a little bit longer and be a little bit more chilled. Um, but since we were just microwaving our caramel, then they only got to set up for a little bit, which is fine, it'll still work. But all you're gonna do is, well actually, I'm gonna stir this a little bit more just to take in this out of the um, microwave. You're going to want to be careful too, just because when you are using a glass bowl, they will tend to be warm. So just pay attention to that. And okay, so all you're going to do is plop, such an official term, plop. You're going to plop the apple into the caramel and you kind of just oops this one I didn't jam in good enough there we go kind of just twirl it like so and I for this one I'm not gonna um like cover go all the way up to the tippy top of the apple I'm just gonna I don't know if you can see I'm just gonna kind of come up about I don't know, what would you say three fourths of the way? And this caramel could be heated a little bit more, which I'll do for the next one. But you kind of just want to 
kind of give it a spin. This is a little thick, so I'm actually going to add some water to it and put it back in the microwave because it's kind of already starting to set up a little bit, which is fine. But it doesn't have to be like perfectly smooth at all, but I just like it too. <laughs> so I'm going to set this guy on a parchment paper and then back onto this plate. And then I'm going to throw this back in the microwave. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Megan, is now um, a good time for some questions? Yeah, totally. That'd be great. So we had some questions about getting your caramel to stick to your apples. We noticed that you heated up the apple earlier with some warm water. That was to remove the wax? Yes. Yes. It's to remove the wax so that the, the caramel doesn't like slip down, it's like slide down the apple. Um, you, you will have some of that. I'll show you that depending upon the consistency of your caramel. Um, and it kind of like gathers at the bottom and I call it kind of like a, it's like a footing almost that ends up happening um, towards the bottom. But you'll wanna make sure that you, you reduce the chances of the caramel slipping off of the apple as much as possible, which means um, removing that, that wax. And I've actually, Lori, oh, oh sorry, go ahead. Lori had a question, does it help the caramel to stick if you dip the apples in powdered sugar. Have you ever heard of that trick before? Oh, I have never heard of that, but I, I'll try it. <laughs> I'm, I'm always up for new things. I have heard of, um, I've heard of people buffing it like with sandpaper actually oh. to make it so it's a little bit coarse like just a little bit, you know, so there's some texture to the apple. So the caramel can kind of like adhere to the little, you know, the roughness of it. Um, but I've never heard of, of powdered sugar, but that's a fun thing to try. <laughs> yeah, if anyone else has any tips or tricks of methods that you do uh, caramel apples your way, we'd love to see them in the chat. Totally. Okay, and then while this is kind of now cooling down a little bit, um, I wanted to show you one thing that's kind of fun that you can use if you have excess caramel. Um, so Jordan, can you see just even that little guy right here? So you can like after, I'm kind of jumping, kind of jumping all over the place, but while our caramel is, uh, is getting a little cooler because I nuked it in the microwave that I'm not super, <laughs> super comfortable with. Um, so that was my fault, but um, so it needs to set up a little longer. But what I'm getting at is you can make like your own just little caramels at home. So normally, like, let's say we go through this process, you make your caramel or you, you know, you buy your caramel, you dip your apples and you just have some that's left over. Well, you can essentially just take a um like you can make like a little loaf you know you can kind of just re i don't have that much right here but pretend this was a little bit thicker you can fold your apple on your parchment paper or on like a silicone mat and just kind of let it set up um and so let's pretend there was more you know you can kind of use your mat or your paper and allow your um your caramel to set up in the shape that you want it to and then you can just come back with, pretend, I'm just, I'm winging this right now. So I don't really have all the tools to show you, but pretend this is a knife and you have more of your leftover caramel. You can just slice off little pieces of the caramel, wrap those in, um, you know, like wax paper and tie them off. And then you have your own like homemade caramels that are either your actual leftover of your homemade caramel if you go that route, or just um, just a fun new shape of caramel that you purchase. So, and with the meltables even, you can, if you have little squares, you can then dip those in chocolate, then you have chocolate covered caramels. So just thinking of ways to like repurpose any of the excess, I mean, you can always just taste test, make sure it's not poisonous, <laughs> which is a good way to get rid of any excess, anything that you have. Um, but 
anyway, so this is still a little warm, but my, my point is just that you don't need to waste, you don't need to feel like you're wasting if you have leftover, leftover caramel. So, okay, let's see if our caramel is a little bit, still a little runny. Sometimes you will learn what not to do <laughs> when, when attending a live Zoom class. So we're gonna just let this one sit up a little bit longer. I'm gonna go back to this apple that is coated. Um, the reason that I the reason that I put this back in the microwave and added it a little bit more water to it was the caramel was too thick. And so you, I don't know if you could see very well, but it's almost, it, I was having a hard time like getting the caramel around the apple, which is an indication that the caramel isn't the right temperature or that it is a little too thick. And so, um, so this one, it's still setting up. Actually, do you mind April putting this one just in the fridge? That would be awesome. And then I'll go to melting the meltables. And then we'll, we'll go from there. It's gonna be great. The other thing I'm gonna show you is if you don't wanna do caramel, just how you can use some of these meltables because we have some really delicious flavors. Like this one is salted caramel. It is so good. Um, and then we have a pumpkin spice meltable. It's really yummy. I was, I'm gonna use this one on the caramel cause I thought oh, it'd be so good to have a pumpkin spice caramel apple be so good but if you don't want to go that route and I have a son who has braces and he's been very sad for the last year and a half because he can't eat caramel so if you need to accommodate to other people in your family because you have some braces or other constraints then you can just straight up do the apples in the meltables and they are still super yummy and super delicious so what I'm gonna show you uh, is, let's see. Okay, so with these multiples, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, microwave some more, but I'm just gonna show you kind of, we have this little like makeshift double boiler situation going on just a little, oh, look, you can see it on screen, just over here a little bit. Um, so you can just straight up put the multiples into um, a bowl, which we'll do that. I'm gonna get a little bit more. Where's my white? Hold on, hold on. And you can go this route where you just put it in a microwave safe dish and pop it in the microwave for, I do like 30 second intervals. And the reason being because um, you don't wanna like burn them they are very forgiving little creatures, <laughs> to be honest. Um, again, because they are like a candy confe a chocolate confection type um, treat. And again, you don't have to like temper, you can just throw them in. They have oil added to them. So that helps, helps them be more forgivable and more easy, easy to work with. Um, but still you can run the risk of burning them. And so what I do is I always would err on the side of doing lower um, or smaller intervals and, and mixing them to make sure that they melt well. So I just put those in for 30. I know for sure that they're gonna need a little bit longer, but what I'm gonna do is, um, so you can see they have already started, they're heated enough that they've already started to melt, which great. But I'm gonna throw them, pop them back in for about 30 more seconds. Megan, we and have some questions about the meltables. Yes. Are the meltables essentially caramel or chocolate? Um, okay, so well, we have, so they're not caramels. They're not caramel. Um, they, and they're not technically chocolate either. They're like a confectionery, they're like a coating. Um, the ones that we have that are um, chocolate flavored, they do have cocoa in them, but they're basically like sugar and oil 
and like powdered milk. Um, and they're, they're, they're really good. <laughs> they're so good. And they do come they, in a bunch of different flavors. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Do they set, do they set soft or like a shell? Or? No. So they'll set up like, you, um, you know, like the ice cream coating that's like a hard candy shell when you put it on, on ice cream. That's how it'll set up. Like it'll set back up hard and it'll have like a really nice like snap to them. Um, and you'll see here in, in just a sec. And in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that after I show you this. So I just put this back in for 30 more seconds and it's already um, totally melted, right? So good. So um, to keep answering your question though, so these are, these are actually some things that we did in a class a couple times ago. Um, they, we just showed like an easy way to do like a charcuterie board, a treat, treat one. Um, and so these are just sandwich cookies, but you can see they are, they're totally set up and they're like the same consistency. If you go to Michael's and buy some and you dip some treats or you, um, you know, make your candied popcorn or whatever, you'll see that they'll set up to the exact same consistency that they are like in their original state. And so that's why they're, they're like little superheroes for us food crafters because they're quick, they're easy to use, they're, um, they're quick to set up. I mean, you can just throw these, depending upon the temperature of your room, um, you can just let them set out and they'll set up or you throw them in the fridge for like 10 to 15 minutes and they are, you're golden. So it's really, really, they're really great, um, really great treats to play with. And I'm going to show you one other thing after the apples that you'll see it's so easy and so yummy, um, and simple, simple to use. And Jordan, can you pan this at all? I don't know if you can at all, but again, this was from a previous class that we taught. And this was just like using store-bought treats and just melting the meltables and like all the fun different things that you can do with them um, as you, like just with the meltables, that's really the only kind of component that we added to it in some sprinkles. But again, I'm just speaking to the fact that they're super easy to use very versatile and they do set up like I can the, the word I keep using is like snap like there's just like this yummy kind of snap shell texture to them which which is awesome does that answer your question <laughs> I hope <laughs> yeah I think that's perfect thank you okay okay so I <clears throat> excuse me so I, might, I melted these in the microwave. Another way that you can melt the meltables, sounds redundant, but there's no way around it, um, is you can use a double boiler. And what a double boiler is, you just take like a, a pan and you put about an inch or so of water in it. And then you can put um, another, like a glass bowl or a metal bowl or something in that water and then you put the meltables in it and then you just set it on top. So the meltables then just kind of gradually will heat. Um, and that's what I keep calling it kind of a makeshift because that's what we've done here in our little um, little studio. But you, we just have like a, um, this is like a disposable aluminum tray. We put really warm water. It wasn't boiling, but it was super hot. And then we put the meltables in a bowl and then you can just set them in there and then they will melt. And what I like about the double boiler is that they will stay warm longer while throughout the whole process, right? So um, microwave is great too, but it's not staying in anything warm that helps it stay warm so that if I'm dipping a ton of apples or a ton of cookies or whatever it is, I have to keep going back to the microwave and, and microwaving them. So anyway, I just wanted to show you both, both ways so that you can choose to do it however you think would be most convenient. No right or wrong way, just wanted to show you. So I'm gonna set this back over here. 
<clears throat> the water is now a little bit cooler, so I probably will still have to microwave some of those that I'll show you, but, um, but again, I just wanted to show you that there are options for melting it. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you, since we have our apple that's covered in caramel in the fridge setting up, is just if you wanted to straight up use the apples with the, um, with the meltables. So same, same uh, concept as the caramel, you wanna make sure that you have a bowl that's deep enough and big enough to hold your apple. And all you're gonna do is dip your apple in and I kind of just give it a swirl. And then sometimes I'll just tilt the bowl on its side and spin it like so. And then you can kind of just tap some of the excess off. Very therapeutic. <laughs> just kind of get in the zone. Okay, so for this one, I'm just gonna do a really simple topping. Um, you can even scrape, like if it's pooling a lot, you can kind of just scrape it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some cinnamon sugar and I'm just gonna drizzle it over the top. I could Technically, I could put the cinnamon sugar in a bowl like I have with some of the other toppings, but for the way that I want it to look, I, I'm gonna sprinkle it on so it's not like so heavily applied on there, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna do this and kind of spin it as I go. Megan, we had another good question. Yes, let's hear it. So Susan wants to know, can maple syrup be added to multiples to give a maple flavor? Ooh, um, I have never, I personally have never tried that. Sounds amazing. Um, I would say instead of maple syrup to use like a maple flavoring that's oil-based, um, so that when you add water to the meltables, it actually like seizes, but it'll, it's a term that um, it just gets like clumpy and hard. And I would worry that I just, since I haven't done it, I don't want to tell you, <laughs> I don't want to tell you it's okay, but I would love for you to try it and then tell us if it works, because that again would be an awesome, awesome thing to know. But again, if you want to add flavorings to it, <clears throat> even though we do have some that are flavored, um, which are delicious, then you can definitely try some oil-based extracts so that don't have the water so that you don't run the risk of like kind of ruining the meltables. One thing with the meltables though, is that if it does, <clears throat> when I say seize up again, it just means that it kind of hardens and it gets a little bit clumpy. But what you can do if that does happen you can just gradually add in like a half a tablespoon, or excuse me, half a teaspoon of like a vegetable oil and then stir, stir, stir and see if that kind of helps alleviate any of that seizing that has taken place. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully, hopefully that helps. Um, I'm going to try, do we have another plate? Because in a perfect world, oh wait, let me rewind. Did that answer your question? I hope. <laughs> yes, I think that's perfect. And I definitely okay. uh, recommend testing it out on a small batch before you yeah. pull back. Yes. yes, but that does sound dreamy and delicious, for sure. especially in the fall, maple. It's like such a staple flavor, I feel like, right now. Um, so April's grabbing me another plate. But what you want to do after you've dipped your apple in the caramel, just like what we did with the, excuse me, in the chocolate, just like what we did with the caramel. You'd wanna put it on a plate or a sheet or something that's lined either with like a silicone mat or with parchment paper so that you can take your apples and go set them into the fridge and allow them to set. Thank you, dear. And <clears throat> let's 
see. So I'm going to put this. So you can see there is some what I call like pooling that's happening at the bottom. Like it's like a little footing that because the the chocolate or the meltables is still kind of um, it's going to drip down a little bit. And so at the bottom, sometimes you'll see and even if you've bought caramel apples, there might be like it's almost like a little pedestal. <laughs> that's why I like to think of it. Like if the apple is presenting itself, um, which just means more caramel and more, you know, chocolatey deliciousness. So, but if you don't like that look, you can like trim back. I'll show you here when the caramel apple comes back out. You can kind of trim back the caramel because it's still workable um, to do that. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try dipping one more in our super warm caramel. <laughs> And then I'm gonna ask April to take those to the fridge and bring back the one with the caramel and then we'll continue using the meltables. Um, and we'll just keep going, showing you some fun, fun stuff. Okay. So see how it's not, you kind of want it to be like a thick sauce. Uh, and um, so I would say that this is like a thick sauce consistency. And one other thing is um, sometimes you'll see that there's like bubbles that form. And um, and if for those of you who have done caramel apples, sometimes there'll be like bubbles on the side of the apples after you've dipped them, which is totally fine. But if you feel like anxious about it, what you can actually do just to kind of heat the, um, to kind of like pop the bubbles is you can just take like a blow dryer and just run it over the top and really get those those bubbles gone. Um, but I don't think anyone, if they get a caramel apple, it's gonna be sad if they're like, but there was a bubble on the side. <laughs> but, you know, for those of us who take our caramel apple dipping very seriously, then who knows? you might want to rid yourself of the bubbles. Okay, so this consistency is much, much better. So you can see I just dipped it in the caramel. I'm just kind of rolling it. It's still, you know, it's still runny, um, which is great. It's how it's supposed to be, but it just means that it is gonna drip a little. Again, you can kind of, if there's too much on the bottom, you can kind of scrape. Um, I just kind of like to gradually hit the stick on the side of the bowl and just kind of go in a circular motion just to kind of even it out. And again, it's kind of therapeutic. <laughs> Okay. Looking, looking good. Okay, so I'm gonna set this guy right here. And I'm gonna see if I can get one more with this caramel. I'm thinking I can. Feeling confident today. <laughs> Shooting for the stars over here, friends. All right. So, again, you just kind of dip your apple in, make sure your bowl is big enough to hold your apple. We're running a little low on caramel, but I think we're going to make it work. There we go. Pretty. So kind of just again, gradually twirling and hitting the stick with the apple against the bowl so that any excess caramel kind of droops off. Okay. All right. I'm going to set that right. Ah, I'm going to touch it. It's gonna to touch its non-caramel counterpart. Okay, we're good. So you go throw those in the fridge and then will you please grab me the other one? Thank you. Okay, so 
April's gonna grab our first caramel apple that we had done. I'm gonna pop some of these, where are they? The pumpkin, pumpkin meltables into the microwave because we're gonna dip our caramel apple in pumpkin meltables and then we're gonna decorate it with some deliciousness and it's gonna be amazing. So again, I, we kind of had our little makeshift double boiler which the water got cold here in the studio. So I'm just gonna stir it a little bit. It's still melted pretty well though. Um, and just nuke it for a little bit longer. Thank you. And I'm gonna add a few more. And we're just gonna throw it. I wish you guys could smell these meltables. They are so, so yummy. And they are just, I mean, they're pumpkin spice. So it's just like, it's just the flavor of fall for sure. Okay, time cook. It's only taken us a few months to learn how to set the time on that microwave <laughs> without it auto defaulting to one minute. Um, so, okay. So one thing I'm going to add, let's see. Oh, no, I'll just talk about it when we get to that point. But again, Michael's, we have a ton of uh, multiples that are available right now. I know it's not Christmas time, but right now, well, Christmas time yet, but we do have like a peppermint meltable. It's like one of the vanilla ones with little peppermint flecks inside. And it's so fun. So seasonally appropriate. And oops. Um, and again, we've got salted caramel. This one's pumpkin spice. It's so, so, so yummy. So, okay. So I'm going to take this apple I'm going to show you kind of what I what I meant when I was talking about the footing. So see how some of it hit, like pooled to the bottom. <clears throat> it's totally fine, right? Oh, sorry. I'm going to move these bags so you can see a little bit better. It's totally fine if that's the case, right? It just means more caramel at the bottom, which is fine. However, if you don't like that look, it's actually still going to be like a little bit moldable. So with your clean hands, you can just go back and kind of push the um, caramel um, to whatever shape you want it to kind of conform to the ribbing, like the natural bend of the apple. Or what you could do is you could even just take some like scissors <laughs> or a knife, which I don't have around me right at the moment. And you can just like cut off the, the footing on the bottom. So either way, you don't have to, again, it's not going to offend anyone, I don't think, but I mean, there might be some fellow people out there that makes it a little, tw get you a little twingy looking at this beautiful apple, but you might see it as an imperfection. <laughs> so I'm speaking from experience, friends. Um, so, okay, so here's our apple. And I'm gonna show you just dipping it into the delicious pumpkin spice meltables. And it's the same process that we did for the ones that we just did together. So you just are gonna roll it and I like to come with the meltables, I like to come up a little bit higher than the caramel. So you're still not, in these ones, I'm still not like completely covering the, um, the apple. However, if you wanted to, you totally could. And I'm just gonna do kind of the same thing. I'm just gonna Hit the side of the bowl with any, so any of the excess meltables will fall off. And so you can see, this was the one that had the little thicker of the 
caramel, caramel, right? So you can see that there's some like texture to that, but when I roll it in some of this toffee, <laughs> it's not gonna matter. <laughs> so, okay. So now I have over here some of our, here's some of our crushed toffee that is available now at Michael's. And I've just put it in a bowl and you can either, um, you know, you can kind of dip it like this. And again, kind of the same, um, like what's the word, same process applies where you can kind of just dip and roll, dip and roll, dip and roll. is like caramely buttery sugar overload in all the right ways <laughs> we've got caramel we've got pumpkin spice and then we've got toffee like she's a miso it's like my dream apple right here okay so then so that's like a bunch of the crushed toffee on it then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, I have some of these sprinkles and just gonna kind of fill in any spots where maybe the, maybe there was a toffee piece that like slid off or maybe you just didn't cover kind of towards the top of the apple, which is fine. Just sprinkle them on. Make a mess. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're, you know, seven again. It's wonderful. My kids love, love making caramel apples. And I love it too. It's so fun. Okay. <gasps> oh, that's yummy. So yummy. Okay, so I'm gonna set this back up onto the parchment paper. I'm gonna just replace this parchment paper right here. So, or get all the sprinkles off so I can, so I can work efficiently, friends. Okay. So at this point, you could totally put it into the uh, fridge and like let it set up. But just kind of for time's sake, I'm gonna show you um, just how you can drizzle and keep garnishing the apple. April, do you mind grabbing those other ones? So I, I didn't realize that I've been taking so much time. And I still have one thing that I can show you that's like super fast um, towards the end that has to do with kind of like a little place setting and hopefully we'll have time for it. If not, I can just tell you through, tell you how to do it and it should make sense and it's a simple thing to do. So all I've done here is I put, I put uh, multiples in a disposable uh, pastry bag and just put it in for 30 seconds, just like I would if I did it in a microwave safe bowl. Thank you. Um, and let's see, scissors, okay. So I'm gonna cut the tip. This just depends on like how thick of a flow you want. So what I'm gonna do just to, to explain it to you before I cut it is I'm gonna cut it and then I'm gonna kind of like swirl around the top of it. And again, depending upon however you want it to look, if you want it to kind of be more thin and delicate, then you just snip the tip of the bag very, very, um, just barely like from the tip of it. If you want it to be a little bit thicker, then you cut it a little bit further away from the tip. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze and kind of just do like little zigzag motion. And even, oops, pull 
fold it like this. Just kind of back and forth, back and forth. So it's like so decadent. I mean, I would not be mad if I sat down to Thanksgiving dinner and had one of these as my table setting. I would, it would feel like Christmas, even though it was Thanksgiving. Um, okay, so here's one of our other apples. And let's see. So let me show you. Um, I'm gonna add some pretzels to this apple. And all I'm gonna do is I have some here in one of these bowls and I'm just gonna take some into the little plastic bag. And I'm just gonna take my little mallet and crush it up. Um, okay, and we'll put it in one of our bowls. I should have extra one here. There we go. Okay. So let's say, I mean, again, you can choose any color you want, any flavor you want. But I'm just going to kind of do some zigzaggy like this. And then either, like we did with the toffee, you can put it into the bowl or you can just kind of sprinkle it on. like this, oops. Megan, we had a good question. Yeah. How long after making these apples do they usually last? How long do they keep? Ooh, okay, so if you store them, like look how yummy that looks, okay. <clears throat> if you store them in the fridge, like airtight, I would say you, you could have them for up to a week. <clears throat> Excuse me, like no problem. Um, I mean, apples, just apples in and of themselves, you know, they, um, they last a long time. And um, so the key though, because you have introduced, you know, um, with punching it through with a, the wooden dowel, you're exposing it to more air, which that's when stuff spoils, right? When, you, when there's exposed air. So if you keep it airtight, whether it's in a Tupperware or in a bag, then um, you should for sure be able to have it last at least that long. So, so look, yum. So fun. Okay. I w just some other ideas we're not going to necessarily I'm not going to be able to get to the other ones because I want to show you really quickly if we have time. Um, but just some other ideas there's some if you're a peanut butter fanatic like I am there's some Reese's peanut butter cups, you can take some I was planning on just like smashing the Reese's pieces, but then using some of the chunkier like peanut butter cups, which is so good. You have some of these tiny little um, M&Ms, which are awesome. When you're at Michael's and you're waiting in line, just you can just grab candy off the shelves that they have there to use for your caramel apples. One of my kids' favorite ones, not surprising, is um, our Oreos. So I typically do these with the white chocolate and the kids go bananas for them. Um, and just really quickly, one thing I wanted to show you, because I know we're super tight on, on time, but you can get these just by way of like table settings, right? You can get these little kind of candy bar molds and um, take your, let's say, let's do this. We'll put some of our favorite candies in 
and just any like excess meltables that you have, um, you can fill it in like that, throw it into the fridge, okay? And um, you know, you can do fill out this whole tray. And then just with one of your uh, disposable pastry bag, I'm just gonna use this one, but you can use again, any color, any flavor. And once you've popped this out, or you could do it on this side, you can write people's names. So again, remember when I twirled my apple and I landed on E, husband's name's Ethan. So we'll do, that doesn't look as good because I'm in a hurry, but the other thing you could do is um, just do it straight up on parchment paper like the name. So let's say you do, my name's Megan. You can just, just like you're writing with a pen. It might take some practice. And then what you can do, you can just place these on top of the little candy bars. I have a daughter named Daphne, so I'll do Daph. I have a son named Jack, so I can do Jack. You let those set up like that in the, oops, um, in the fridge. They will be, um, they'll be thick enough that you can just literally just pick them up. You could place them just straight on someone's plate like that. You could put them on top of a cupcake. You could put them on, you know, on top of the candy bar. Um, just a little personal touch to, just to add something super special for, the people that you're having over for Thanksgiving. So there you go, there you have it. <laughs> I hope that there was something that you learned today that will inspire you and motivate you to just, just be creative in the kitchen and to, if you have time and the resources and the energy, um, you know, to head to Michael's to pick up some of this stuff and just to have some fun while you're making some Thanksgiving treats for for your family and your friends um, on Thanksgiving. So thank you so much for coming and for being here. It's, it's always fun. So we'll see you next time. Tune in because we're coming back, I think, next month for some Christmas stuff. So we'll see you then.